You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. What is going on, guys? Again, welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Dini. We have another special guest for you guys. So you definitely want to stick around for this one. As a matter of fact, go ahead and text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now. And let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Before I bring my guest on, I do want to say, what does it really matter? If the task is difficult or complicated, it needs to be done. It needs to be done. Difficult is only a matter of opinion anyway, and you have the full and complete power to change your opinion. When there is work that must be done, you can see it as a chore, or you can see it as an opportunity to achieve excellence. Like, yo, I get to do this. I'm so happy that you thought of me to do this for you. Something like that. You know, an opportunity. You can fight against it or you can put the power of your effort and creativity into getting it done. If you're going to do it anyway, does it make any sense to torment yourself about it? Imagine how much smoothly it will go if you could simply decide that it isn't too bad after all. Like my dad used to send me to go cut the grass. We had a yard, a large yard with no ride and lawnmower. Yeah, you read for right? Anyway, there would be these weeds and I would pretend they were soldiers and I would mow them down with the lawnmower. You know, I was like, 10, 11, more than a yard, but hey, I made it a game and got it done quickly. So if you're going to do it anyway, does it make any sense to torment yourself about it? Of course not. Ironically, the willingness to undertake a difficult task makes it easier. The acceptance that things can be difficult makes them less difficult. Is there something that needs to be done? Something you've been putting off because it seems so difficult? Imagine how great it would be to have it done and behind you. Imagine it, then start right away. Own it willingly cheerfully and with the highest expectations not only will you make it easier you will also make it happen which is the most important part take that from me coach Dini. are you ready ooh, 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 yeah. wow. this is the voice of dominic tony here to invite you to see me perform live may 25th at the north hills dive bar and grill See Dominic Tony live May 25th at the North Hills Dye Barn Grill. Dominic Tony live May 25th at the North Hills Dye Barn Grill. Showtime starts at 8 p.m. For more information on how to book Dominic Tony to perform in your venue, go to www.dominictony.com. Don't miss out on a night to remember. Come make some memories with me. And remember, folks, you ain't heard nothing yet. Messages I share around Love in my heart 
are to be found Writing words down on a page All throughout the house's sage Freedom here inside this room On a peaceful afternoon All right, all right, again, welcome to the show, guys. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Dini, and that was a song called Sage by Zachary Campos. Our interviews are designed to go beyond the music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings, you know, the ones who were out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Vigilantes Radio. Today we have a very special guest whose music has touched the hearts of many. He's an MC, a singer, songwriter from San Jose, California. You guys know him. He's been on the show plenty of times, and he's known for his unique blend of old-school hip-hop, classic punk rock, and indie rock. With his latest release, The Castle, he marks a significant movement in his career as he prepares to retire from music. <laughs> Hold on, gotta cry a bit. <laughs> to focus on being a father and pursuing his dreams of becoming an author. So please join me in welcoming the incredibly talented Zachary Campos. Yo, 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 my bro, how's it going? My man, how's it going? I'm very, very happy to be talking to you right now. Yes, sir. Likewise, likewise. It's a bit bittersweet for me, but uh, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. Let me this. let me just let me set the record straight just real quick. The, this is not the last music I'm ever going to make. I promise you. It's only the last music I'm going to make under the name Zachary Campos. Oh yeah, you're, you're switching to another moniker. Uh yeah, that's the plan. Because basically, like what I was kind of doing with my catalog of music that I put out this year was like kind of wanted it to be like a story like you go from scorching to finale and it's like it tells a story kind of in a sense but like i do want to keep making music but under a different name you know it's kind of like a like a fresh start i guess if that makes sense yeah i get that i get that uh do you have this name cooked up yet i'm thinking um something along the lines of like joseph k or something like you know like definitely a character from a franz kafka novel or um, so something along those lines, like a character from a story or something. It, it'll definitely be something along the lines of uh, literary. But I, I will say that uh, I'm not going to put a musical project out for a while. But in my mind, a while is like a month. <laughs> you know, like a, a while is like a couple months. So we'll see. I got you. I got you, man. Yeah. Um, I see that you are an avid reader. Yeah, right? I love reading. It's just like. I don't know, I just feel like it inspires me so much and I think um like my lyrics have gotten very strong ever since I started reading like, you know, on a at a really solid pace, like and making an effort to read every night. It's it's really helped me exponentially. Not only like with my music, but I think like in my personal life and my spiritual journey because a lot of the reading I do is very ex- or it's very spiritual based or you know like it's very like uh, kind of like taps into the heart so I think a lot of that has helped me a lot in my in my life you know right on what are you reading now um I actually took a break so I was um I was reading uh like so Franz Kafka they released like a, a collection of his short stories but I was um I have a OCD workbook that I've been putting off forever because you know it's scary to confront that stuff but i was like i need to stop pushing this off and i need to like face it so i finished the first short story in that book and then i you know put it on pause so now i'm i'm reading uh it's a ocd workbook that's helping me to understand my my problems with ocd more and to you know really like heal mentally and just to like feel more at peace like it's like i said it's very scary stuff but at the end of the day it's only been helping me so i've been been really happy about that and um so that's that's the book that i'm reading right now and you know the workbook i'm completing and then after i'm done with that i'm going to get back to the the collection of short stories 
Yes, sir, man. Speaking of Franz Kafka's, uh, your new EP, The Castle, inspired, is inspired by one of that his novels. That was a smooth transition. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very smooth transition. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I read that. I devoured that book. Like that, And I will tell you this, that was not an easy read because like, characters in that book will just talk for like 30 pages. Like they will just have like thirty page monologues. I'm just like at wow. so, like at a point you're like, who is talking? But I mean, it's like so, it's just like so captivating the way that he wrote. Because I mean, it's such a simple story. It's basically just like about a man named Kay. He's a land surveyor and he's trying to get access into the castle because he needs to survey the land. And this is like a really complicated process, and it keeps getting more and more complicated. But then I think as the story unfolds, you really start to understand his character more and, you know, like the little world that they live in. So it's, it's really interesting, but it just like made me think of like, cause I'm here at a, an extended stay hotel with um, my girlfriend, Monique and our rabbit Luna. She's um, Luna's here, but Monique's at work right now. But yeah, so like, I was just really inspired. I was like, I got to put out one more thing. Like, and I, I knew it had to be good too. So I was like, all right, I got to make this like really, really good. So I, I took my like kind of like um like things I've been meditating on like concepts I've been like really you know in deep thought about and process them into music and you know I, I think this is for sure my best work like I, I just like think this project will stand the test of time and it'll outlive me like I I don't doubt that for a second so I'm really 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 proud of the end result of the castle you know i think every single song is really solid and i think a big difference of why the songs turned out like so good you know um number one i would say was because when i was well you know of course cause i was so inspired by the book and everything but number two i think because i was like all right is this gonna be it like i gotta like i gotta go out with a bang i gotta go out swinging and then three i think just because like of the music I've been listening to and like the way I've been feeling I'm just like kind of in that you know artistic zen zone where I'm just like like in that creative spirit where like I just can't miss you know like I just keep hitting <laughs> like everything yeah. I make is just hits you know so I just I don't know I just feel like so on top of my game right now not like of course not, I don't mean that in a cocky way or anything I just mean that in like a I feel very focused and I feel very confident in my abilities as a musician and you know all the all five of the songs I performed them in their entirety from beginning to end at my performances leading up to recording it at the studio so I got to like get them in front of an audience and I feel like that made nice. a huge difference in the recording process. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, too, no, man, uh, I believe you are right on point when you said this is your best work, because to me, every song is polished. Um, I had a chance to listen to the EP several times before this interview, and I was like, man, this guy's going out with a bang for real. He's like, he's like <laughs> leaving, leaving us. Yeah, I was like, he's he's leaving us listeners on a cliffhanger, you know? It's like, <laughs> no, no, come back. Basically, back. yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, let me leave my best work. Like as soon as I announce I'm like done with music, I'm like, like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, here you go. Like you know, it's like, wait, like, like just as like people want more, I leave. I'm like, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was you like, know? how dare he do this? <laughs> like, wait, wait a second, <laughs> nah, I appreciate on this show. it, man. <laughs> yeah, I think like, cause I, I think it's really that indie folk sound that just like I just fit into that mold so well that I think yeah. like I've been. Cause, you know, I've been working with like a lot of like high quality playlisters and stuff for Spotify. And like, I'm like, yeah, my music fits so well on like those indie folk playlists and everything. Cause like, it's just totally, and I didn't realize like how popular that genre is now. Cause like, I mean, I don't really listen to that music to be honest. Like I listen to like old school folk music. Like yeah. right now I've just been like on nonstop listening to Simon and Garfunkel. They have this I will recommend this album to you. It's uh, their album Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Time. And it's like every single song is just takes you to somewhere else, you know? Like, but that album has just been like on repeat for me. And I've just been like, like, cause I was listening to them, to their Bridge Over Troubled Water album before I got to the studio. And I was just, or the day before, cause um, it said that they, uh, the Paul Simon, who's like the primary songwriter, was very influenced by gospel music. So, so I started listening to the music that he was listening to, 
and it totally made a difference in my vocal technique and I've been implementing it in every single show I've had you know I've been having quite a few for the past month to be honest and I just feel like um like whereas before I used to think like push your voice because you know I have a very deep voice so it's like push push like make it resonant make it loud like but i realize that it's like when i perform it's like the quieter i am the more attention i get and like mm. the more people i get listening because they're like entranced by it you know so it's yeah a pretty awesome thing like i feel like i really found something special with like this type of music and i mean you know i've always been influenced by johnny cash and, right. and james taylor and like like i remember one of our Frank first Sinatra. interviews i Oh yeah, for Frank Sinatra for sure. Cause yeah, like I sing all those songs when I perform live, like "Fly Me to the Moon," I've got you under my skin. I've been singing that music since I was like in high school, you know, and like that was yeah. like seven years ago, like eight years ago. So I've been, I've been singing that music for a while. So I think I've like finally started to embrace my voice. Cause you know, like I love rapping, like it's very fun, and I'm very happy with the, like the hip hop music I've made. But I'm definitely going more into that route of like. No, nah, like I want to be like a like a singer songwriter, like classic American folk musician that like just you know people can go and like study. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's just that's what I want with my music and my my artistry. I want to just like I want to be like a musical monster. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I just want to be like one of the greats, man. I feel like I'm I'm definitely on my way. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what I can do. So I'm I'm really excited about all of it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I believe that this, uh, the Castle EP is also like, I haven't read Franz Kafka's novel, but I'm sure this is a perfect companion to it, um, especially the way that you laid out the lyrics. And we're going to dive into some of the lyrics later on. Uh, before we do that, though, man, looking back on your journey so far, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, man, that's a very, very nice question. If I go back to when you say younger, do you mean like uh, like just starting? Because I started music like at 18. So would you say like that age or like like how young are we talking about? Uh, the multiple years, like middle school and elementary. Ah, uh, okay. Um, if I go back to myself, I'd be like, fuck sports and don't do theater. Start a band. <laughs> I would tell myself to, to like be a musician you know like if I could yeah. go back in time and tell myself like to like I'd be like start learning how to play the ukulele and learn how to sing and like do this you know but yeah, ultimately you like if I could have uh, oh, I'm sorry what were you saying my friend you would have you started earlier is what you're saying yeah I would have started earlier but if I could give myself some more kind of like you know wisdom like my younger self I would just say like you know just just trust in your instincts and just know that you have a good heart and you have the best of intentions and don't forget that you know don't like don't live and die off the approval of other people just trust yourself and understand that you are good enough and because the people that you want approval from they probably don't even think that they're good enough so why are you seeking approval from somebody who can't even provide that for themselves you know yep yeah. So, man, how That's are you? Great facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, how are you feeling about this next chapter in your life? Terrified. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very scared. But fear is a good thing. Fear is what keeps us alive. Right. Yeah. It's like with me and my sister. I had a really, really beautiful conversation with her not too long ago. Probably like two hours before um, you and I began our conversation, and we were talking and like. We're, she was just like saying like about like fear with like that's like anxiety and everything like yeah it sucks you know because my sister has OCD too and that's what the topic of our conversation was but she was saying that like when we look back at like like history it's like anxiety is what keeps us alive you know so it keeps mm -hmm. us present and it what, it's what keeps us safe and like because like I mean you're walking down the street one day and like you see like this dude who's like like you know looking like really sus and you're you're, just, you're not just gonna go towards him you know what i mean you're not gonna be like hey man how's it going like you're gonna walk away from him and you're gonna avoid eye contact because you're just cause that's anxiety you know so it's, yeah yeah it's good to feel that way i mean obviously like you know it's like it's a good thing but it's like i don't know it's it's like fear is good because it keeps us alive but 
I, I think I'm just very excited as well, like to have my daughter and you know, my whole family knows now, like we announced it to the whole family, so nice. it just feels very real and I'm just very I'm very blessed to have this life that I have and you know, I really have no complaints. I, I, I have a pretty great life and you know, I'm very blessed to be able to do what I do and to perform where I like I mean just this weekend like I you know on Mother's Day I had a five hour performance like I got to take a break you know but like is that like one of the most like premier wineries out in Livermore which is where I've been trying to get to you know here in California like where I live that's like Livermore is like like Napa's like you've made it Livermore is like that step right before Napa you know Ooh. so like I'm like I'm like I'm I'm right there. I'm like right around the corner. I can feel it. So like Napa's next. I got it on my radar. Nice, nice man, and we're rooting for you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Man. For sure, for sure. And and like you said, man, anxiety is like I guess it's just being aware. You know, if you're aware, you're on high alert, and it keeps you safe, keeps you secure. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man. So you recorded the castle at um, Kingdom Voice Productions. Must have been a unique experience. Um, how was oh, the recording? Man, it was so awesome. It was so cool. It was like for sure my favorite recording process that like I've ever partaken in. Cause yeah, so it, it just felt like I was like in the '60s. Cause like I walked in, you know, I brought like I felt like a real musician. Cause like I brought my ukulele and everything. I was like, this is like all me, basically, you know. Like I like this was this is on my shoulders like because I don't have like uh, his name's Tim he's the uh, one who records all like the guitar parts for my other songs you know and then Josh does like the drums and stuff and um, but this one I was like nah like I like you know they're there for the production to make it sound pretty but like I you know obviously you know they do a lot more than that they they offer me like wisdom and insight but yeah so I I got there and then you know it was Tim and Josh was on his way and like. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, partake in, uh, the Mary Jane beforehand <laughs> to get into that, to get into that mindset, you know, like, I'm not, not going to lie, but, um, it definitely like got me into that creative zone. And as I was uh, walking in, I just felt like this energy, like, you know, like really calming, like very, like very serene energy. And I walked into the studio and then we got it set up like the booth with Tim he mic'd up my ukulele and then he also like plugged it into because my it's acoustic electric so he he plugged it in to a, a cable like the cable he plugged it in like to the the speaker and all that and then um i so i sat in the booth and i recorded all the ukulele parts and like it was really cool because like i could hear them like on the intercom and they would be like one two three four so like i felt like like the beatles or something you know mm -hmm. like it felt really cool and like um and then i recorded all the ukulele parts from like from uh purpose to finale like back to back and um and then after i laid down the vocals and then we came back in and we were then they mixed and mastered it um and it was just like a like it was like really like nice because i it, it just felt very friendly like they're a very great team you know like tim he's like he was like a like musician like i mean you know, he's still a musician but he was like um like a really popular watch band or a band the chocolate watch band in the 60s so like he he's been around for a minute and josh is my age you know he's 25 so he's like a younger dude like me he's got something to prove so mm -hmm. we're just like a really good team and we have like this really good synergy when we record and you know, like we all just like speak the same language and there's never like oh that sucked or like oh like i didn't like that it's always very positive it's always like oh how, like you should try doing this or, like oh what if we try doing it like that it's like very like creatively inspired like area and like kind of like a like very like safe haven to be working so i think that's why the music turned out so great is because like the experience was so like it was just so magical you know it was like it felt very like like straight out of a fairy tale or something and i i had a wonderful time recording this project and you know I'm, I'm i'm very happy with the work that they did they they really made it sound really really good they use this uh because they record all their projects and um oh my god they're gonna kill me for forgetting the name it'll come back to me but uh basically for like the effects that they use uh it was uh they use this effect called soothe 
which made all the vocals sound really, really nice and made it sound really just clean, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. It was very clean. Uh, so I did read something very interesting about us, the making of... Well, before I ask you that, did you record this process at Kingdom Voice Productions? Like when you say record... Uh, oh, um, sorry, real quick. I was like literally looking up because it was bothering me. It's called Pro Tools. That's the, <laughs> that's ah, the recording yeah. software that they use to record. And that's like, you know, a really great one. Um, but yeah, so you said... Um, uh, no, I didn't because I just wanted to live in the moment. Like, I wanted to record it, but I was like, I feel like this is like, this has to be like a moment in time kind of thing, if that makes sense. It does, it does, it does. I probably would have did the same, man, and then probably would have kicked myself. Oh, man, I didn't get any behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but, but like, for me, that kind of like, because um, I, I can be like a little superstitious, and like when I record and stuff, I feel like it, it um, like I myself like lose the authenticity of my own performance because I'm like performing for the camera rather than performing uh, for the music, you know. I so that's I just see. me. Not everybody's like that. I see. No, no, that that's that's huge. Yeah, I see. I see. So yeah, something I read uh, about you um, incorporating well, gospel music played a very significant role in your vocal technique for this EP. Um, what is it about gospel music that speaks to you, and how did you incorporate the elements in in, in Castle? Yeah, because uh, as I had mentioned, like that came from Simon and Garfunkel and like Paul uh, Simon uh, being influenced by gospel music. But like, I think like. Um, I for like the I listened to like this album on the way to my to the studio and I'm gonna find it right now because like you know I'm a very like particular person I'm like if I like listen to something specific like I gotta tell you like the exact you know like thing it was it's just right here because you know I document all the stuff I listen to the five blind boys of Mississippi the tide of life that's the album name, the title of life. Um, and I, I listened to that on the way there um, because like, you know, I went down the music rabbit hole and found that. And I think it was just like the feeling, the soul, you know, like the, like, it's just like, it's that music was like, literally like made me feel like I was like elevating out of my car chair, like while I was driving. And I, I just felt like I was like, like floating and like I could see my own body and I was like, this is like the effect I want to give, but like, and it was cool because that album is very like soulful and it's very like proud and the sound is very big and like, you know, it sounds like, like you're just like there with the, with that band, you know, and like, you're just feeling it, what every word they're saying, because you know, the production for like that album was very like grand, you know? And I was like, how can I, like, elicit the feeling that these guys, like, did in their project, but, like, the exact opposite? Like, how can I make it, like, how can I give the listener that feeling, but instead of going, like, really grand and very big, it's just, like, a, like, one guy in a chair and a ukulele, and that's it, you know? Like, if, if it was on stage, it'd be, like, me, like, with, like, I'm just sitting like on a chair and I have my ukulele and like I'm just wearing like really plain clothes or like you know I'm like I just like have my ukulele I'm singing and it's just one microphone one ukulele and one voice you know yeah. I was like how can I like captivate an audience by doing that and I was like I have to go soft so like with my vocal technique like just instead of like a harsh tone like a distorted sound like I need to like I need to like make my voice sound really soft and like serene so you know i i think gospel music really like played an influence with that because i wanted to make people like feel something you know and every time i play these songs live like since i've recorded them it's just like they hit so hard you know and like especially like when i play them at like uh like nursing homes and stuff like like because that's kind of like I wrote this project to be performed anywhere because like I can't just like go perform like funky MC at like a nursing home you know like I mean I could play some of the songs like, I could play like everything or traffic maybe but like most of like the songs I can't because you know they're all like rap and stuff there's nothing wrong with that because there, you know there's no cursing or cussing or anything but with this project I can perform it anywhere so like I 
I, I think that was like a really smart business move on my part because now I can send this out to wineries. I can send it out to, you know, assisted living facilities. I can send this to freaking Burger King and go perform it there if I want. <laughs> you know, like, because it's just like a good fit. I mean, like, it's just not a lot of people like perform the way I perform, like with the ukulele, like with the low, like G tuning and like singing like really deep and like finger picking so like i think i really stand out you know i'm tall too like i'm six foot six like i, I get it oh, in the, i didn't in know my, that the place <laughs> yeah no, i'm a giant like and it's just, i think it's just really funny because you would exactly like me and you have been talking for like a minute now and like yeah. I, I i find it really funny that like that it is like shocking because i don't have that personality of somebody who's really tall i feel like i don't carry myself that way and like I don't want to, you know, because yeah, I'm like, you, you oh, you sound very really humble. Bad. You know, you I sound very bad. humble. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same height as Jordan and Kobe. Oh, man. Yeah, can you can you can you play ball? Um, yeah, like it's funny enough because I can't dunk because I've never had a vertical, but you know, like, but I do enjoy playing basketball. Like, um, I like shooting around and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. the way I was raised um, was very competitive, so. Uh, like playing like a game of basketball makes me sick to my stomach, but like shooting around is fun, if that makes sense. I got you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, just like that childhood trauma that, you know, yeah. we all got it. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, man. that's what makes people interesting. Right. So, man, uh, Monique, shout out to Monique. Uh, shout, shout out, out to, to your, Monique. Shout out to your rabbit, Luna. Luna. Uh, yeah. You hear that, or, Luna? <laughs> <laughs> she's right there too. She's meditating right now. Are are these? Yeah, she's. Is Monique considered your your muse? Yeah, for sure. I'm I would still. not be where I'm at without her. Cause like, yeah, I'll tell you like a very like beautiful story. Like so, um, it was well. So me and Monique met at Winco, which was where she's working right now in the bakery. So I was working in the deli department, you know, I was like frying chicken and stuff. And like, and I actually really enjoyed it when I was working there. Um, you know, I just like had to go and be a musician and stuff. Like I didn't like hate the people. I actually loved working there, but yeah. So, um, I worked in the deli and one day, like, you know, I met Monique, I was behind the counter and I hadn't seen her before. And then later that day I ran into her again and we were talking and then, you know, I'm smooth with it. So I asked for her number and then I, I got it and um she was gonna ask me this is funny enough like but i beat her to it and then um we i um texted her that night and then we were like talking till like six in the morning and then we like um it just like blossomed from there and then um we, we didn't you know we were like friends for like a month which by my standards by somebody who like rushes into things is like you know a very long time yeah. and then um yeah so we it all like kind of cultivated because i had like this performance last year it was on like 420 blaze it you know and um so it was like i had it was at an open mic um because it was like this tracy open mic that i had been going to since january of that year uh last year and i i had the artist spotlight which was like you know you kind of got like your own like set basically and it was really cool because you know it like dimmed the lights and like i had a bunch of my family come and everything and like i don't know that night like something like changed within me because like you know and i, and I credit it to monique because she was she came and supported me and you know like and that night like i just got hit with like the soul you know like the soul just like found me and it just hit me because like i had never sang the way i sang that night until that point and like after that day like i was just like all right like i'm good enough to do this professionally like i got this like you know this is gonna be my career and then um the that day like 420 is our anniversary because that's the day i like to think she saw me like performing and she was like i gotta get this guy now <laughs> because <laughs> you know i was like like uh like i was like a very persistent man with her like i really wanted to be with her you know because she was awesome and like i loved hanging out with her and like and that day was like the day i got her so i feel like that was like you know one of the best days of my life and like and the next day we just spent it together we watched uh the movie Bo is afraid and you know, ever since then, I just feel like Monique's been, like, she's been, like, freaking, like, all my performances. She's, like, super supportive of me. 
she believes in me as a musician but not only does she believe in me as a musician but like she she believes in me as a man you know and like the nights i have with her are amazing like right now we're watching Grey's anatomy because i've never seen it she's watched it like three times already mm. and that show is like 20 seasons 20 episodes each every episode is like an hour so you know she she loves that show and I just, I just really enjoy my time with her and she introduced luna into my life who's like one of the best things that's ever happened to me so you know like that, that's why i feel so grateful to be alive because like everything i have is and it, it just feels like very right and and i love monique with all my heart and i'm very happy that she's carrying our child and I know that she's gonna be an amazing mother and you know i'm just very grateful for everything i have i don't i don't take anything lightly or you know i don't i don't uh, i don't for one second not appreciate the life i have because life is very very beautiful and this world could always use more positivity and love you know absolutely man that was so beautiful of you to say and the word sure. is bond and word is bond. <laughs> and word is bond. You know, it's funny when you were doing your intro. Uh, it's, it's like the line you said. I literally like mouthed it with you. Like you're like, um, oh, past the ego. Like I literally like mouthed that. <laughs> like while you were saying it, or like said it with you. And I was like, man, this guy. I feel like in the same regard that like I'm like gonna blow up. So are you, man? And then we'll be up I at the top, it. and then we can just like do this, you know? And like we'll have like. A bunch of people listening to us yes sir man i believe it i believe it especially for if you, i'm going man. up i'm taking you with me hey there we go there we go i got I you i got you man ironically i wrote that intro like three years ago and i was saying it so much <laughs> i could say it without the notes i could just, I could just That's awesome. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like you're like uh not like catchphrase but it's like you're lying you know like yeah. it's what you're known for but yeah no man I, I think like what you do is really great and i think that Thank you're you. definitely on your path to success like the questions you ask are amazing because it's not just like like oh like basic questions or and i mean i don't i don't yeah. want to say there's anything wrong with that style of if that's just what people do that's what they do but you know i like what you do because you like like you like you say like you advertise you go beyond like the music like you really figure out like who is this person because i mean that's the beautiful thing and what makes like music so awesome is like you know the big reason why i love old school rap so much it's like personality it's like you can listen to like one rapper and listen to another rapper and like they're completely different but it's like why are you going to listen to this one i mean i understand there's like the quality of music and the style and genre but it's like personality that really you know it really is the main draw of music and what makes it so interesting and it's like uh when you're a musician you're like a superhero and it's like what's your superpower you know like are you are you captain america are you iron man are you black panther are you you know who are you you know and me man, i'm spider-man uh, <laughs> man, that is my favorite marvel hero yeah me uh, too. dc is batman um vigilante in marvel the punisher vigilante oh DC, yeah the Man, arrow yeah oh uh, yeah. yeah i used to have this book like when i was younger it had like all the marvel superheroes in it and it had like their stats and it had like really really like unknown characters and like the art mm -hmm. style and like i gotta find that book because i know i can find it i remember it, like so vividly it had like a black cover and it had like all the superheroes on it but it taught me a lot about like the different types like i knew who thanos was before he showed up in avengers you know yeah. and that was pretty cool because like i saw him i was like i know who that is right yeah i remember seeing a book like that before i saw it at um hobby lobby years ago years ago <laughs> i'm like i know where i'm going tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I what I will say is that like if they were gonna make a movie about any superhero, about like any like Marvel character like that I would love to see, it'd be Gambit. But he's gotta have Ooh. like his original look because yeah. that guy's sick. Like with the with the staff and like the the trench coat and the you know like and the cards like that Gambit's like dang maybe maybe you just help me find my moniker for my future music maybe maybe it has to do something with gambit or definitely something yeah. superhero related the raging cajun he was so cool 
with the Dang, purple eyes. I'm so happy hair. you knew that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. raging cage and yeah, no, seriously. He, he was, was my favorite in X Men beside uh, oh, yeah. Iceman. Bobby oh Drake. yeah, Iceman was. Oh, oh yeah, Bobby Drake. There, there's a there's a rap name for you. Yeah, Bobby Drake. Yes, sir. Bobby Drake on the beat. Man, so in Sage, uh, you mentioned pondering on my location, headed toward my destination. Could you tell us more about the journey you're reflecting on in those lines? Yeah, definitely. And um, I, I, you know, I, I'd love to share a little bit about the song too, because mm-hmm. I feel like Sage is really good. And the reason why is because Sage was another song that I wrote called um, Mirror uh, that I wrote like months ago you know like um for a different project entirely that i never recorded it or anything but you know because sometimes i just write like projects to get to like a new one if that makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah so sage came from a song called mirror that has like the same exact chords and the same melody and and i performed that song live at like open mics and like you know so like i i uh kind of like got it out on its feet in front of an audience so that song like was a little like more developed than the other music but the first line specifically pondering on my location uh, heading toward my destination it's like um like i feel like we're doing like a genius verified <laughs> lyric <laughs> breakdown but with an artist who actually has something to say you know oh um, hey, yeah, before, you go, before you go further i want to share with you uh-huh. that's what's coming next for uh vigilantes radio a segment oh, called uh, line by line where we pick apart the lines and talk about it Oh, okay. Well, I will definitely have to participate in that. Yes, sir. That sounds, that sounds lit. Yeah, so basically, um, oh, best of luck with that, by the way. Thank uh, you, sir. So for, yeah, no, of course. Yeah, so basically, like, it's just kind of like saying, like, you know, I don't want to, like, go too in-depth in with it, like, because I feel like lyrics should always, like, kind of be, like, what you, like, interpret, like, with any art. But, like, but basically, like, my interpretation of that is, like, where I'm at in life and, like, reflecting and meditating on this moment and seeing like where will i be tomorrow and like the uncertainty but like being okay with the uncertainty because like the whole song sage is like a tribute to my mom because she's the one who taught me the significance of sage and i also uh, attribute it to my dog that i lost juni who was 16 at the time of his passing and he was a very very beautiful soul that like you know i, I sage the house for him because she told me to set an intention so any, every time i perform that song live i always tell that story before and i, I feel like it gives it a lot more weight you know because like that I, I just feel like um it's, it's like a song that like i feel like kind of like sounds sad but it's not sad when like you read it it's more like um appreciative but like i think it's it kind of that, that song i feel like could literally be like a song that was written like in the 60s or something so I, i'm really happy with and I noticed that was the first song you played, <laughs> so that when I was listening to it, I was like, "Oh man, I'm happy. Th- this guy's got good taste. Like he he picks the songs that I would pick, you know." It's my favorite, man. It's my favorite. Yeah, that song is. I'm really happy with that song because I think like the one I'm pushing to promote is Finale because it's number one the longest, and number two it's. Uh, I think like objectively speaking, it's probably the best song on that project. But I think like Sage is like one of my favorites if that makes sense because it's just like it's a very like emotional song but it has a lot of weight but it's like also like it does a lot in like less than two minutes you know Mm -hmm. it's a sweet song man and it hits the sweet spot i loved it when i first heard i was like yo this is it i love it i love it (laughs) thank you very much man i mean i think you were like onto something because like when you said about spirituality like from profound knowledge how much you like that song and how mm-hmm. you um would promote that one and i did end up promoting that song and it's done pretty well too like like uh, organically so you know i i definitely uh don't take your kind of like feedback lightly you know i'm like okay if he says he likes the song then it must be pretty good you know thank you man thank you yeah no thank you for sure so i want to jump into another song the last song on the record is called uh finale so there is a lyric that says finding peace of mind hitting sin um how do you find peace of mind amidst the hustle of the music industry and how do you plan to maintain that peace in in your new endeavor well um i i'm like i told myself i would find a way to implement this 
into the our interview mm-hmm. and so i'm implementing it here so i um, <laughs> i was listening to uh uh an audio book of uh the oral history of hip-hop by jonathan abrams i believe because you know i also listen to audio books too nice. and um like much slower process for sure it takes much longer to finish but it you know it's 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 nice like when i'm driving and i'm like oh, yeah, i don't really want to listen to music right now so like i'm gonna like you know study up and it was talking about the bay which is where i'm from you know the bay area san jose like that that's how you know like i I, i'm not sure if you talk to like other artists from the bay area but like if they are from the bay you'll know because they'll tell you (laughs) you know like that's like a calling card of like being from the bay area is like i'm from the bay like that's why i say to my music all this like my hip-hop stuff because like you know it's, it's like it's really cool to be from you know san jose and everything and like uh like just like because i was listening to uh that book today and it was talking about too short and how he used to sell cds out of his trunk and how like him and like Ant banks and like mc Ant, like they would like sell like they would be hustling you know and it's like the term natural born hustler and i feel like that's what i am you know because like yeah like my style of music is way different than too short or like these other guys like Tupac, you know, you also got to start out in the Bay with Digital Underground, but, like, right. I I think to, like, bring it back to what you were saying, like, my peace of mind comes from, like, the, like, how happy just, like, telling you that information made me, you know, like, the, like, music makes me, like, feel this, like, peace and calm and serenity and, like, with, like, music, that's my way of, like, being at peace and, like, finding that love within my heart and i feel like that's probably what those guys were feeling too when they were selling cds out of their trunk because like and like mixtapes and everything for people to bump while they were driving their lolos you know like down the streets like in the west coast in the 90s because it's like it's like yeah like i understand like i'm on a much different path like i'm more taking like the simon and garfunkel and james taylor but like i'll always be a, a g from the west coast and like that's how i find my peace of mind is just knowing who i am you know like that'll never that like personality will never leave me like i'll always have my personality no matter what like even if i lose my life my music will still be alive so like i'm that's how like making this project was my peace of mind like it was like i made something i could be so ridiculously proud of and now i could just go and do whatever i want with my life and i i could literally like do anything and i'll be content because this project turned out so like bleeping amazing that i'm just so happy with my music and the legacy i've left behind and like if this is it that's the only music i do ever put out then like i'm good with it you know that's why i wanted to make this project because i was like i got a baby on the way i gotta start saving up money like i gotta like start buying like diapers and like a crib we gotta find a place like i gotta do all i gotta do this and that like i gotta like go to all my performances get my name out there like i have so much to do but like that peace of mind comes from knowing that i have that natural born hustler mentality and knowing that at the end of the day i'm doing what i love and like i'm doing it because i have so much love in my heart and when i look in the mirror and i see myself i'm like you're pretty cool you know i'm i'm proud of you for who you turned out to be because like i when i was younger i was uh like I was not happy with who I was. I was super insecure. I was very, very depressed and I was just very not who I am now. And the the person that I am today is the person I've always wanted to be. So I just, you know, I, I really do love myself. And I don't mean that again, like in a cocky way. I just mean that in like, I, I really do have a lot of love for myself because I think I'm, I think I'm a, a pretty, pretty solid human being you know and yes, my goal sir. is to just bring more love into this world so that's just my my authentic self you know yes sir i love it man i love it all right all right we're going to jump into finale and then we'll be right back with more zachary campos so stay tuned <laughs>
I kept on going I kept on flowing Here to end the show I've really gotta go Time to grow up In my heart there's love I pray for my family They mean everything to me Thanks for your support I'll never come up short And it's all because of you You believe in what I do That's more than I could ask for Now I'll exit the stage door I had a great time Finding peace of mind Hitting sand Hey, what's up, long time? I forgot to mention that, oh, by the way, this is Dini, you know, Vigilantes Radio Live, uh, VP of Operations for Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, Only One Theory dropped a new single. It is called La Hefecita. It's on Spotify. As a matter of fact, it's on all major platforms. You should check it out right now. Oh, and by the way, there's also a visual on YouTube. It's hot. Check it out today. OnlyOneTheory.com Check that out too. Peace. Alright, alright. Welcome back, guys. I ended this segment with the song finale the end let's go ahead and bring back zachary hey hey man i forgot to mention our hot seat uh where you could perform for us if you want to sing rap poetry spoken oh, word, tell a yeah. joke tell a story <laughs> get some advice you could do whatever you want man or do nothing at all it's totally up to you that's awesome, man. You know, it's funny. I was uh, going to ask. I was going to be like, all right, well, can I please play a song? Because, you know, I'm just I'm feeling it right now. Yes, sir. You can. Cool. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sitting right now in my hotel room, and it's very dark. So this feels like, not like the the vibe, but like it's literally like the curtains are closed. All the lights are off. So, like, you're about to hear something. <laughs> uh, all right. Yes, this is a... Uh, as per you know how much you like the song and i'm for sure feeling it right now here's here's sage pondering on my location headed toward my destination poetry that i do write Lucky to be feeling like the wisdom that I often hear, the reason that I feel no fear. Looking out the window at the scenery, appreciating all of the greenery. Where I'm at in life is great That's why I believe in faith 
messages I share around Love in my heart to be found Writing words down on a page All throughout the house's search Freedom here inside this room On a peaceful afternoon Incredible! Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> My favorite song. Oh, yeah, no problem, <laughs> I like that man. was just that's for me, man. <laughs> you know what? You know what, dude? That's what happens when you just listen to Simon and Garfunkel on repeat nonstop. You just you get it. You know, like you just yeah. like you understand what folk music is. You're like, all right, I just gotta like. It's like that finger picking. I think is what makes the difference in the song. Cause like when I finger pick, like the way I just did when I was performing it right now because I've been practicing and like implementing different techniques like I literally was like implementing a brand new technique just there called the like sweep picking where like you like play all the notes like like a chord but like you leave out some so it gives it like variety and like I don't know man I just feel like I'm on my I'm on my Aang the avatar like when he you know when he finally like masters all the elements and he just like goes out to like fight that dude like the comic guy at the end of the show like oh yeah i just you know what i'm talking about i just feel like i'm in that zone so i'm really happy that like uh, i got to perform that song and uh i'm very grateful that you gave me that opportunity because that was uh that was special for sure so thanks man i appreciate it absolutely man we appreciate you we appreciate you for real for real i just feel like i was in a front row seat man seat uh listening to you play <laughs> yeah you see what i'm talking about like um with the whole like simon and garfunkel because that whole like thing with like because that um they perform one of my favorite songs by them parsley sage or sorry the song is called scarsborough fair slash canticle um from that album i mentioned to you um and the, it was Andy Williams, I believe, like, you know, like a, like an old school host of like a classic, like show. And he used to like perform and stuff. And he said like with his own performances, he used to go like really big and like dancers and lights and all these mm -hmm. things. And like when he went to go see Simon and Garfunkel, like when they were on the, you know, when they were on the come up, he said that it was just the two of them and a microphone and a guitar and their voices and that that was it you know like so i was like i just feel like ever since i found their music like their music found me you know and like i feel like i need to bring that like authenticity back to music because it's like i mean i know it's still there and i know there are many artists out there who are like like really like you know hustling and i'll always respect the, the hustle no matter what genre you are or just like artists in general because it takes a lot of courage to you know pursue your dreams and Oh, yeah. I don't know it's just like the whole like minimalist thing is just so appealing to me like the whole like one chair one ukulele one microphone and just one voice and I mean my job is to entertain people and I'd be entertaining people for like four hours and it's not easy and I'm definitely refining my skills and right now I'm building my resume so that when I'm out in Napa I'm like you know I'm just that dude <laughs> I'm just yeah, walking man. around with my chest <laughs> up and you know, like, because, like I said, like, I, I, like, I'll always carry that, like, West Coast G mentality, like, that I was raised with, and, like, kind of, like, the bravado, because the bravado will get you far in life, but the heart and the spirit, that'll take you to where you really need to go, you know, so, yes. like, that balance. Yes, and That's the word of the day is balance. Balance, I love it. All right, yeah, man, man, so... One final question for you. As you exit the stage door, <laughs> what message would you like to leave for aspiring musicians who look up to you and who may be just beginning their journey in the music industry? Wow. That's really beautiful. Because, like, just to think that, like, like what, what, I, what would I tell myself starting out at age 18? What I would tell myself is, like, 
the same thing I told myself as a child and what I would tell any other musician is that you are enough. Don't ask for anybody's approval. You don't need it. You know, like if you want to ask for advice and like there's a there's a difference in like asking for feedback and asking for approval and just like I know it's easier said than done and trust me this is coming from somebody who was extremely insecure and somebody who really really like struggled a lot with their like self-image and their self-worth is that you know you are enough and you really don't need anybody else's approval like you just believe in yourself and like like find that line of confidence remain humble like be in tune with your spirit and meditate listen to music that nobody's listening to and like find inspiration from sources that people wouldn't expect those sources to be taken from and like and you can do it you know like i would just tell any any musician who wants to make music like or anybody who wants to like chase a, a dream of like being a musician is don't give up no matter what don't let and if people are talking smack about you or people uh, want to see you fail then by god you're doing everything right <laughs> if, if people just like when you get haters that's when you're like "Ooh, i'm moving up in the world because people hate people who are successful and happy it's so sad but it's so true and that's why love is so powerful because if you love yourself and if you love because loving yourself is loving others Mm -hmm. The way you see yourself is going to be the way that you see other people. And if you find that peace of mind that I'm always talking about in my music, then like you can really just do anything. Like you can, you can go to Mars. You can just like, you can chase those dreams you have. This doesn't even go for musicians. This just goes for any young person who's struggling with themselves or like, you know, like has a passion or a dream. And like, like I would just tell them, you know, just, just do it there's what's stopping you the only person that's ever going to stop you is the man in the mirror you know because mm -hmm. you this is something that my old co-worker bill who was like my mentor you know he's like this army dude who worked in the deli with me and you know is like one of my greatest teachers that i've ever met he told me you get on that comet you grab that sucker and you don't get off of it you know and the only person that can get you off that comet is you and like he told me like I'm on my comet right now you know like I'm burning I'm going I'm moving and grooving so you know I just uh, that's all and the last piece of advice I would give any artist is stay focused yeah yeah stay focused I can't say be patient because I'm extremely impatient when it comes to music so I don't want to be a hypocrite <laughs> just just make just make great art it's as simple as that just make great art that you yourself would listen to or just like you know just do what you create the art that you want to see brought into this world because that that's what i did with the castle like i would have wanted somebody else to make that if that makes sense and i would have listened oh, yeah. to it and been like damn this is good mm. yeah and I just remember that. word is bond <laughs> Word is bond and look past the ego. That's what I would tell them. Yeah, it's funny you say that, man, because I was thinking about changing Word is bond to uh, Are You Ready? I don't know. It's just like I love the Word is bond thing. I mean, that might just be like the old school hip hop fan in me, you know, because that's like yeah. super popular phrase in that type of music. But like whenever you say that, I'm just like, it like, it just gets me hyped. Like I was literally like, pumping my fists like as you were introducing <laughs> the interview i was like i felt like i was like about to like walk on stage or something like we were doing like a like a late night talk show or something you know that, that's definitely the vibe i'm feeling right now this is like nice. late night talk show vibes you know yeah man i appreciate that thank you for your kind yeah. words, man. no of course and yeah i want to leave you with one um recommendation that i i've been watching like a lot of like um old school like talk shows and everything from like the 80s and 70s you know like the dick cavett show and all that and i, I would highly recommend that to you like I, i'm sure you do your research and everything because you're very like well prepared with your interviews and everything and but like um a lot of like those slower interviews like i would recommend to you because you know it seems like it fits your style regardless and like i think that's why like we're one in the same like if 
like we were like in our past lives like you would have been like a like a late night talk show host in like the 70s and i would have been like a folk musician that you would have had on that would perform or something you know yeah yeah man thank you i have to check well i have i've heard of the jimmy cabot show i've just never uh had a chance to uh watch it um but I, i'll take your advice and uh take a look at that see what yeah you should go down that rabbit hole because there's yeah. like a lot of really because you don't just uh um interview musicians right you interview right. like all artists of every kind yes sir yep yeah, so you should definitely check out those interviews from that era because I feel like, especially the 70s, because I feel like like they really took their time. Nowadays with the interviews, it's like a lot of like gimmicky based kind of like, you know, things they're doing and like there's a lot of like like celebrity appearances and like cameos and all that and like it's very loud. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think like the old school talk shows like where it was just like very quiet and they would really talk and like you'd really get to know the person and like was, and they wouldn't like they would talk about some pretty like intense stuff too you know like yeah. was, they were very real and authentic so you know authenticity is key to remaining successful as a not even an artist just any field or profession i think because if you remain authentic and true to yourself then you're always winning you know absolutely absolutely Man, I feel like this conversation, it's like the profound knowledge. Well, it wasn't profound knowledge. It was the one we were having about Funky MC that, like, I talked to you and, like, literally changed my life. And I was like, like, and then I went and wrote profound knowledge. So I feel like every time I talk to you, like, I just, it, it sets me on the path that I need to take. So these talks have, like, definitely give yourself some credit because you, you've definitely played a big part in my music Thank process. You, so, yeah. No, thank you, man. Thank you, seriously. Because you, like, you helped me to meditate and focus, like, on ideals that I need to, like, really sit with. So I think, like, through our conversations and everything, like, I've really started to understand myself better. Because, like, I asked myself the questions that you asked me. And, like, the last time we talked, then you were like, what would you want to know the answer to? I was like, did what happened to me really happen to me? Like, that forced me to, like, really really confront that and that was not easy but now i feel really light in my soul because i'm just like no like i'm not running from that anymore like i'm actually facing it and understanding myself and like you know because through the darkness we find the light you know yeah absolutely absolutely man well we are still rooting for you uh actually i have one more question it's it's about um uh, your author life, you know, uh, what mm. things or stories are you excited to explore? Would you like to, to hear about my idea for my first book, and then I will, then we'll call it a day. Of course, of course. All right, cool, man. Yeah, so um, it's it's pretty dark, though. I'm gonna preface it with that because uh, my the the line of uh, books I want to go into is horror, you know, like but psychological horror because I love horror movies. Like that's like probably one of my greatest passions aside from aside from music is going to like the movie theaters and watching like horror movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I've always wanted to create a story that was like a psychological, like a one that like really, really messes with you. And yeah, so basically the, the idea I have right now, it's a, it's a story, it's called Every Parent's Worst Nightmare. And um, so the story opens and it's like a very bright and sunny day in July and it's like 2004 and um, it's like a, a birthday party, you know? So it's like a really happy day and like there's just like a lot of like life and like there's like little kids running around like throughout the house, like all the cousins and everything and like the parents and like you see like the uncles in like one room talking smack to each other and like you see like like you know like like little like vignettes and then like it's kind of like you go through each room and when you get a, and then you get to like this one scene which is like this uncle and he asks like like because like the book's like oh where's the birthday boy and like you see like he's with like his uncle and his uncle's like oh um like here i wanted to give you your present early so the kid like he's like yeah you can open it, it's okay and then the kid opens the present and then is like like the uncle's like oh do you want to like go uh to your room and open like and like and uh you know like use it so then it's like a nerf gun or something and like 
then uh so he goes up to his room with him and then he locks the door and then the book is gonna say something like in a way he took his innocence and the child's life would never be the same after that moment ever again and then then it like the page ends and then the next page says every parent's worst nightmare and then the whole book is basically going to be like a play with just dialogue and, and it's going to take place like 30 years later and um the main character it's just going to be like really like like family drama kind of stuff and it's going to be like another birthday party but the vibe is much darker this time around and then the the story is basically going to end with the the same thing happens you know like the like so basically the the kid who was the like victim of the abuse in the beginning of the story um ends up becoming the adult who abuses another child and like in the same fashion on his birthday in his like in that same room that it happened to him but then he gets caught and then he gets sentenced to prison and he gets brutally beaten in the prison and like they stab him and everything and the book ends with him like lying there bloody on the floor like getting like beaten by all these people and like being assaulted so like it's like, like i said it's like pretty heavy stuff but like the main character is like that kid that got abused so it's like i was like i i want to like turn like my ocd and like my darkness and everything that i like have to struggle with and i want to turn into something like i want to make some money <laughs> off of it so absolutely i don't know i you know i think this is like a really really great idea and like i'm really excited to write it because it's going to be like written in the style of like a fairy tale like a really dark fairy tale like very like uh the writing is going to be like kind of like a like once upon a time and like a village far away type of writing but yeah, yeah no I, I think the story is like because you know like a lot of it has to you know the main theme is definitely the like cycle of abuse and how that affects a victim and how that victim can easily become a perpetrator of that abuse and you know how a family can turn a blind eye to it even when it's happening right above them and how when they finally put a stop to it then the cycle finally ends yeah you know? yep so it's like it's really dark and it's really like you know it really is just out there but i i think like I, I i need to write this story in order to heal from my own trauma you know yes sir man well so, i can't wait to read you'll it. be one of the first people i send a copy to my friend nice. i'll tell you that nice 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 all and right then you'll see it on netflix as a series <laughs> oh, that as a mini series limited for- series yeah, and imagine then, like then, that 2000s like vibe at the beginning, like that early 2000s vibe. Like that would that would be pretty cool, you know? Yeah, and then you write a soundtrack to it. Oh my god, man! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're cooking here at yeah. Vigilante's Live. <laughs> we're cooking. Yeah, That'd be dope. All right, my brother. Where can our listeners connect with you online? You listen to me on. Uh, my website ZacharyCampos.com all of my projects for free if you're broke and you can listen to I I believe Bandcamp because I just uploaded all my music to Bandcamp today so I think that's free as well I'm not really sure too much to be honest how it works but yeah Bandcamp I believe it's free but you can like pay for it if you want to I think that's how it works like if you want to yeah. download it but yeah. you know like you listen to me on like Spotify Apple Music YouTube all my all my music videos that people should definitely go check out especially the one for Finale because it's pretty sick um, and uh, yeah just like anywhere you can uh, listen to music you can find me and you know you can just if you want to meditate and have like a relaxing evening light a candle think about life deeply then definitely check out the the castle because that's that's the one you know yes yes indeed all right my friend until next time uh, we always appreciate you um looking forward to everything Likewise. that you have going on uh, we're rooting for you and everything man thank you zachary for sharing your incredible journey and heartfelt insights with us today your story is always inspiring you always inspire me and we wish you all the best in your new adventures as a father and as an author to our listeners make sure you just subscribe to both zachary campos at all his social media sites we will have them listed in the description of this episode and in the show notes so all you guys have to do is just 
just click those links and connect. And you can support Vigilantes Radio by leaving us a rating on any of the platforms you check us out on. Share the show with your friends. And if you enjoyed the episode and want to support us, you can purchase me a coffee over at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Vigilantes Radio. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations and keep following your dreams until next time. Thank you so much, Zachary. Amen. Have a good night. You too, man. Peace. Peace. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart's Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request some music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone And actually, scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show, so deal with it. (laughs) Just kidding. On behalf of myself, Denny, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in, either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook twitter instagram tumblr snapchat tiktok at all social media sites as well as spreaker youtube we always follow back okay well just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself peace love grilled cheese and talk with you later You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds, of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive. What's up guys, it's Dini, and I want to welcome you on a journey of the heart and of the mind. These Fucking Feelings podcast is a beacon in the world of mental health advocacy, and it invites you to join a conversation that's changing lives. We are here to share, listen, and grow together. Led by the passionate Michael Bravery, alongside the insightful Rebecca and Crystal, This award-winning podcast dives deep into the human experience from navigating relationships to coping with loss. No topic is off limits. It's about real stories and real emotions. These fucking feelings is more than just a show. It's a community, a place where vulnerable isn't just accepted. It's celebrated. You can find it across major platforms, including YouTube and Facebook Watch. This podcast is a touchstone for anyone seeking understanding and support. These fucking feelings podcast where every emotion is valid and every story matters. Tune in and transform the way you see mental health.